Hello everyone, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom, where we explore the inner workings of your body so you can outsmart all those microscopic troublemakers. I'm Ethan Foster, and I like to call myself the keen observer of life's everyday absurdities. And I'm Alara Sky, armed with a quick wit and a head full of scientific oddities. Here, we'll navigate the labyrinth of natural health and, hopefully, come out smarter, or at least entertained. If you're new, we're delighted to have you. We're calling today's episode Severe Infections and the Heart, a match made in the wrong part of town. If that title conjures up images of gloom, well, we promise we'll try to lighten the mood. Right. There's nothing like comedic commentary on heart failure, pneumonia, and sepsis. Who says we can't laugh while fortifying our immune systems? Let's dive in, because apparently there's a whole lot going on with this notion that what doesn't kill you might still come back and get you a few years later. First up, let's talk about heart failure. According to Dr. Mercola's notes, about 6.7 million Americans over 20 already have heart failure, and that number is expected to balloon to 8.5 million by 2030. Globally, more than 37 million people are affected. That is a staggering number. One might hope the heart could handle a few million heartbreaks before throwing in the towel, but apparently not. Heart failure basically means the heart's muscle can't pump enough blood. This results in everyday drama like shortness of breath, leg swelling, and the occasional crisis where you're singing a personal ballad called Where Has All My Energy Gone? A catchy tune, I'm sure. But get this. If you get a severe infection like pneumonia or sepsis, it can double your risk of developing heart failure. Nothing says insult to injury like your lungs making your heart wave the white flag. The part that caught my eye was that the heart can be in pretty decent shape beforehand. You don't have to have a pre-existing heart issue. The infection itself can set the stage for heart failure years down the line. It's like that shady friend who leaves chaos behind even after he's gone. Let's lean into the specifics. There's a study mentioned that tracked over 14,000 adults for 27 years. They discovered that once you're hospitalized for any major infection, pneumonia, sepsis, or even urinary tract infections, your chances of later heart trouble shoot up significantly. We're talking a twofold increase for heart failure across the board. Indeed. And it's not just the kind where the heart struggles to pump out blood, HF ref, or heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, but also HF pef, where the heart is stiff and can't fill properly. As if one type of heart failure weren't enough to worry about, we get a double feature. The biggest culprit seems to be inflammation. When you have a major infection, your immune system goes on high alert, flooding the body with chemicals. It's like the super defensive friend who thinks the best plan is to set everything on fire to get rid of a housefly. Precisely. The immune response is necessary, but if it overstays its welcome, that inflammation can linger, wreaking havoc on the heart muscle. This can eventually mean the heart is too stiff or too weak to do its job. Think of it like that over-enthusiastic coworker who rearranges the entire office, breaks the copier, and then leaves you to deal with the chaos. The study also noted that respiratory infections like pneumonia and influenza top the list of heart failure risk factors, along with bloodstream infections. UTIs and digestive infections are on that list too. Basically, if you can get it in the hospital, it can raise your risk. And if you have other conditions like diabetes or hypertension, your risks jump even higher. It's a perfect storm. Pre-existing issues plus an aggressive infection equals the heart eventually screaming, I need a sabbatical, about seven years later. Right, and that's an important point. The average time from the infection to heart failure diagnosis was around seven years. Heart failure didn't show up immediately. It was like a slow burn. You'd be singing I feel fine for years before the other shoe drops. Seven years is enough time to make you forget you ever had pneumonia or to forget that you promised yourself you'd never get that sick again. Sometimes, the body holds a grudge longer than we do. So, how do we protect ourselves from these nasty infections? Dr. Mircola loves pointing out the importance of vitamin D. He says optimizing vitamin D levels helps produce antimicrobial peptides that keep bacteria, fungi, and viruses at bay. I love that the solution might be as simple as stepping outside to soak up some rays. Nature's discount pharmacy right above our heads. Just be mindful not to overdo it if your diet's been high in seed oils. Because apparently, those can turn your sunbathing session into a recipe for inflammation. That's because linoleic acid, commonly found in vegetable oils, can cause nasty reactions when hit by sunlight. It breaks down into toxic substances that damage skin. So, the recommendation is to dial down your seed oil intake for a while before you enjoy extended time in direct sunlight. And then there's the ideal range for vitamin D, somewhere between 60 and 80 nanograms per milliliter. Testing is key, because if you're too low, you can guess all you want, but you might be missing out on the best antibiotic your body can produce. Another interesting notion is the concept of fresh air. Ever heard of the open air factor from the 1960s? Researchers noticed that outside air has some mystery element that kills pathogens pretty effectively. Makes sense to me. Mom used to say, go get some fresh air. I always assumed it was a ploy to have peace and quiet while I was outside. But apparently, it has real science behind it. 
The sun's UV rays also zap viruses, and some unknown synergy in fresh air apparently does a number on germs. This is a reminder that maybe we should crack a window more often. Between the lack of fresh air and the synthetic chaos in many indoor environments, we're basically creating a lovely bacterial spa. Even if you're not exactly climbing mountains or planting vegetable gardens, a walk outside or a little time on the porch can give you that fresh air therapy. Cheap, easy, no prescription needed. Moving to a more serious note, sepsis. It's that condition where your body's immune system goes haywire fighting infection, leading to dangerously low blood pressure, potential organ failure, and a sudden cameo by the Grim Reaper if left unchecked. It's more common than many people realize. More people die from sepsis than from prostate cancer, breast cancer, and AIDS combined. That statistic always catches me off guard. People often don't talk about it until it's too late. The standard approach is a heavy dose of antibiotics, among other interventions. But Dr. Paul Marek, a critical care physician, found success treating sepsis with a combination of intravenous vitamin C, thiamine, and hydrocortisone. People who were on the brink of death started recovering quickly. It's fascinating that something as humble as vitamin C might have such a profound effect when combined properly. Of course, it's not a magic bullet for every single patient, but the results were impressive enough to get doctors talking. He published a retrospective study showing that mortality dropped from 40% to 8.5% in his treated patients. That's enormous. If a new pharmaceutical had that impact, it'd be on primetime commercials every night. Now, the question is, how do we avoid sepsis altogether? That's always the better route. Avoid the raging infection rather than try to fix the damage after it sets your immune system ablaze. One big step is to take infection seriously from the get-go. If you have a UTI or a skin infection, don't brush it off like it's no big deal. Address it promptly to prevent it from escalating. And in the bigger picture, focusing on restoring cellular energy can help as well. If your mitochondria aren't doing their job because of poor diet or other factors, your immune response can be compromised or go into overdrive at the wrong times. There's also the gut connection. A healthy gut is crucial for a robust immune system. If your gut bacteria are out of whack, it's like having an untrained security team at the entrance to your body, letting intruders in. And the typical Western diet loaded with vegetable oils and added sugars can breed chronic inflammation. If your immune system is already stressed, a sudden infection can push it over the edge. Another practical tip is simply being cautious in hospitals. They're filled with antibiotic-resistant bacteria, so be mindful about hygiene. We can't all avoid hospitals entirely, but if you're there, hand-washing and staying vigilant can cut down the risk of an accidental infection. And speak up. If you see a nurse or doctor come in and start examining you without washing their hands, it's okay to politely ask. Your heart and overall health might depend on those small but crucial steps. Absolutely. No one likes the microbe hitchhikers you can pick up in medical settings. Let's circle back to the heart. We've established it's not exactly thrilled when you get a bad infection. One question remains, can the heart bounce back if you do everything right afterward? It seems that focusing on your vitamin D levels, fresh air, and a gut-friendly diet can help your heart stay resilient. We might not reverse every bit of damage, but we can support the body so that it's not an inevitable decline. We're not doomed to a life of gloom just because we had an infection in the past. This is more of a call to action to prevent future severe infections. If you avoid them, you're basically sparing your heart from a potential meltdown. Precisely. And a meltdown that might take years to manifest. It's not like the heart sends a polite memo. Dear occupant, your 2018 pneumonia event is now leading to heart failure in 2025. Sincerely, the myocardium. Another angle is how the inflammatory markers, like interleukin-6 and TNF-alpha, can remain elevated long after an infection. It's as if once triggered, they sometimes forget how to turn off. Yes, like leaving the lights on after a party, driving up your electric bill. In this case, your heart bill is inflammation that damages the muscle over time. That's why anti-inflammatory strategies aren't just for people with arthritis. They apply to anyone who wants a healthier heart and a better immune response. And we see again how everything is connected. Immune health, metabolic health, heart health, gut health. Nothing operates in a silo. Good point. Stress is that silent driver of many health issues. Even if you eat well and get some sun, if you're an anxious ball of tension, your body won't be in the best state to combat infections. Exactly. Stress reduction is basically a free therapy that complements vitamin D, fresh air, and a decent diet. Whether it's meditation, reading a good book, or telling jokes to unsuspecting bystanders, find something that helps you decompress. I'd like to remind everyone that while heart failure sounds terrifying, a lot of these strategies like optimizing vitamin D, minding your nutrition, reducing junk oils, are quite approachable. You don't need advanced technology, you just need awareness and consistency. And a bit of patience. A total lifestyle revamp won't happen overnight, and your heart won't magically glow with vitality at the flick of a switch. But small, steady changes can keep that inflammatory chain reaction from taking hold. I think that's a big takeaway. Controlling inflammation is crucial, because if severe infections are the trigger, inflammation is the bullet. 
Together, they do the damage. But if you remove either one from the equation, you reduce the risk. Nicely said. And in that sense, you might call this cellular wisdom, the body's capacity to maintain balance if we give it half a chance. We should probably wrap up with a quick summary. Heart failure is a big deal and is on the rise. Severe infections, pneumonia, sepsis, UTIs, can more than double your risk of developing heart failure years down the line, thanks to chronic inflammation. Vitamin D is a rock star for supporting the immune system and preventing severe infections. Fresh air and sunlight aren't just old wives' tales. They genuinely help neutralize pathogens and optimize your vitamin D levels. Sepsis is especially dangerous, but there's hope in treatments involving vitamin C, thiamine, and hydrocortisone, and even more hope in never letting things escalate that far in the first place. Lastly, be mindful of your diet. Limit those vegetable oils, protect your gut health, and reduce your overall inflammatory burden. Go outside more. Don't fear the sun. Respect it, yes, but don't hide from it. We appreciate you joining us on Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. May your cells be wise and your infections be non-existent. I'm Ethan Foster, signing off with a quiet, optimistic grin. And I'm Alara Skye. Thanks for listening. Remember, small daily steps can make a huge difference in the long run, especially for your heart and immune system. Until next time, keep it light, keep it curious, and keep your cells happy. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.